I'm back again. My sister's taking a nap when uh, Jim had gone to the store, my brother, and uh, the uh, that lady pulled out. I don't know. I'm gonna try to get you a view of the RV. Uh, where I'm, I'm on Wi-Fi, carrying this laptop around. Even <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> and can you see it behind me? I'm gonna try to tip it down a little bit. I can see it in the reflection. See there? Kind of a little bit off into the distance. This is the property, kind of more or less. All right. Trees and the, this is the go all the way around here. This is the front porch. Amen. Okay. So I don't know how far my sister had her uh, iPod or iPad, some big things that she's got, and it went all the way. The Wi-Fi kept her connected all the way up to the. Uh, mobile home there or the RV and she talked to her children so I am suspecting that as long as I'm at least in the neighborhood of the house that we should be pretty good connection with. <laughs> I didn't get a chance to finish what it was I was sharing with you <laughs> and uh, which you know I've uh, to those of you that have uh, been on uh, following my this channel for any period of time you you know that in my heart that's, that's I always seem to come back to the fervent love of the brethren and in in uh, a genuine sharing of one another's personal lives uh, and opening up of that pouring out because uh, I don't know how in the world well not the world but how in the kingdom uh, we would be any different and this has really been a part of the issue for me in my life. When I came into the kingdom uh, and became a citizen of the kingdom of heaven from the time of the baptism of the Holy Spirit, uh, to me, I was taught how to live and uh, have my being in Christ, okay, which is in, in the kingdom. All right? So the issues that many people deal with in the world regarding how to get along and different things and do different things in the natural in the earth in the building of the earth uh, I wasn't really <laughs> too interested in that stuff okay I, I got uh, into uh, fellowship and ministry of the Holy Spirit uh, and earnest study of the Word of God for the first three years to establish that foundation of my life and from that point on uh, the leading of the Holy Spirit uh, for the building up of the inner man uh, that I might be matured in the Word of God and, and come to the fullness and the stature of Jesus Christ. So uh, that's pretty much all that's really been uh, in my heart and mind to do. Needless to say, all right, there's a lot of living that goes on between the time we come into this and uh, you know, for me, uh, 35 years later, okay, that uh, there are a lot of different issues that come up that you have to deal with in this world with different people and uh, family members and, and friends I'll try to set you up. For, I know I've noticed some videos, amen, that uh, it looks like they're looking down at you. You know what I mean? And, uh, Depending on how you got the laptop, amen, Jesus. Uh, I'm going to try to flip this out so I can actually see where my head's at in this thing. You know, as big headed as I am, you know. Ha! Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, now it looks like I'm about right. You know, I have that little audio signal that keeps coming out on it, too. And then I can't see myself and focus center the picture, so. Which, you know, I'm going to I'm gonna share that now. I really have, I'm starting to lean towards wanting to eliminate any uh, vi uh, video part and just go with the audio. I've noticed that uh, for myself, 
Uh, years ago, when we used to have the uh, the tape play, uh, tapes that we used to get the uh, faith ministry tapes and the different evangelical ministers that were coming out 30 years ago, uh, that you focused more on what was being said uh, when you were just listening and not watching. So I really want to uh, maybe start to get into that uh, where I'm covering the screen uh, because I don't, I don't want anything to be distracted from the word that's being shared. Um, I don't know if you can see some of the, uh, the beautiful shrubbery we have here in the desert. <laughs> uh, but it is really nice out here. And I like being out in the country. I uh, I really enjoy it because there's a peacefulness and a tranquility of uh, you know that you don't get. I don't think in the city. All the commotion and the noise going on, you know. So anyway, I uh, uh, was a little concerned. Have been most of my life, you know. Uh, we're separated wholly unto God. And I, I know that for some people that might, they might not really understand that that's really actually what does take place. It's, it's the living revelation. It's the walking in the faith of which we are separated wholly unto God in the kingdom of heaven. And that's, that's our walk of faith. That's, that's walking in the light, okay, of the kingdom. Of God, Jesus. So your whole perspective uh, changes. Your whole view and, uh, like I said, perception, the way you understand and, and perceive things to be, because you take them to a different place. First of all, you judge yourselves and in, in, in everything. And you fall short of doing that, and but you get you know right back up, and then you go back over it, and you know, and you say, well, I see where I did this, and I did that, and I was guilty of that, and you take it before the Father, and you ask Him to forgive you, and and uh, if you have a chance, uh, if there are individuals involved, then you go to them and ask them to forgive you, or you know, whatever the case might be, and and that's just what we go through. That's the working in and the working out of what takes place in our lives. At least it should be. I, I know a lot of people talk about knowing Jesus. And I wonder if they're having the intimacy of the relationship of walking in the kingdom, which is walking in Jesus to me, okay, in the light, which is really where the intimacy all takes place. Now, how do you, in a literal mind, literal world honestly say well I know Jesus okay like I know someone in the natural okay my brother or my sister I've come to know them okay in a personal way how do you, how can you say that I can't so I don't know Jesus in the natural okay I don't know him that way I know him in Christ I know Jesus in Christ. I received him by faith. And Christ is what? The anointing. The anointed one. So it's the Holy Spirit's presence. Our walk in faith, in the presence, in the kingdom, is where our relationship, our intimacy with Christ takes place. This is how we actually come to know them, come to know him. We come to know him from the inner man. To the Spirit of God. So I wonder how many people actually really know Him as the Christ, the resurrected Lord. So, <clears throat> that being what it is, <laughs> Amen, Jesus. I didn't want to get off through the Word. I, I really am trying to share, hopefully, with you so that 
the next brother or sister or person in your life that you come in contact with, perhaps you'll open up a little more if you've known them for a little bit of time and start to begin to share your faith, your journey, your understanding, the love of God in your heart, okay, towards others and what you've, what he's brought you through uh, to surrender and to overcome. And uh, let that voice be the voice that's being heard, not, not our voice, you know what I mean? Praise God, my brother law just walked out. You can get a first hand picture of him. There he is. That's Jim. <laughs> he just walked out the door. This is his property out here. And, and I sure appreciate it. So, uh, where was that? Oh, yeah. So, to me, that's the fellowship that's been missing in the in what they call the churches assembling themselves. They're uh, it's not really like getting to know one another like you do your own family. And yet we're 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 claiming that we're a family of God, but we don't even know each other. So to me, that's a hypocrisy. If you're a family member of mine, uh, and I'm around you, I'm going to get to know you. That's natural speaking. So spiritually speaking, why should it be any different? We should know each other. And I've shared this before, to the point that I'm able to understand what's going on in your life, and you're able to understand what's going on in my life, and we have the intimacy of relationship of how where we're at in our walks, so that when I come to you and share something with you, you're honestly able to enter into prayer with me before the Father because you actually know me. You know where I'm at. And this, to me, is the genuine sharing in the sufferings of one. I, I was on a video, I, I, I visited a video, and it, you know, I, for the most part, I really kind of enjoyed the fella. Uh, but I made, like, two different comments just to share my opinion. All right, which, I mean, if you're going to have a video out here and you're offering yourself up there and whatever it is that you're sharing, and they got comment sections down there, I like, duh, you're supposed to make comment. <laughs> Most of these want you to make comments that are complimentary to what it is they're saying. They love them that love them, okay? But if you say a comment or have, share something uh, that you're picking up on when you listen, well, I got to share twice. And the next letter, the next comment, reply I got back from him, you are blocked. And if you looked at what it was that I shared, there was absolutely no reason to even be blocked. So I think about this brother. He's sharing something in the Lord. But then when it comes to long-suffering, I'm thinking to myself, wow, he's a long-sufferer. <laughs> you know, I mean, two comments and boom, you're blocked. Uh, that's the kind of stuff that, uh, like I said when I started these videos, when I had uh, what I believed was, hey, time's up, possibility that uh, this was a different time, not with the emphysema that I have now, but years ago, 10, 12 years ago, it had to do with, uh, what's that called? Oh, tuberculosis. And I had a false positive. Six months later, of course, and I didn't receive it. Uh, amen. I rebuked that in the name of Jesus right away. But nonetheless, my age and that happening, because at that time I was probably about 46, 10, 12, 56, about 50 years old. So uh, I was a little concerned at first about that. So I, uh, I went ahead and concluded, and I've shared this before, that uh, if, if my time was really up, all right, then I was going to start to share with everybody I ever met or knew what was in my heart regarding what I'd come to understand according to the Word of God and how it is diametrically opposed to the vast majority of the so-called Christian faith. It just is. It's a, to me, it's a bunch of phony baloney. 
It's all lies and deception. They're playing church. It's, it's churchiosity. Okay? And for the most part, they don't even know it. It's the false religion, false pagan religion of the sun god worship. That's how they mix Jesus, the son of God, with the, you know, Jupiter and Saturn and all that sun god worship stuff and turn it into the son of God. Okay? Sun, God, worship. It's a pagan, false religion for the most part. <clears throat> Like this other brother says, the enemy is coming in like a flood. He has. Few are they. Amen. Few are they that enter in. And the wheat, or the tares outnumber the wheat, I'm telling you. Uh, to the point that uh, in, in, a, in a congregation of a hundred, there may only be ten who are genuinely faithful. Then you got this Tim Leahy movie coming out, Left Behind, which is the biggest fat lie to everybody. You, come on. You see it in the movie where uh, all of a sudden, poof, that lightning hits, right? Like a boat of lightning. And 99% of the church is gone. There's just a few left. Now, that's not what the Word says. The Word says that many shall come, but few shall enter in. So the truth of that movie should have been when that lightning struck and the thunder or whatever the vast majority of the church should have still been there and there should only have been a few that were actually taken out that would have been the truth but it's that kind of lies of deception amen and I believe it's all connected to our not having a genuine personal relationship one on one with each other that's where the lie comes in at and that's why I share this way with you. To try to get you out of that. Out of that false covering. Okay? Into a reality. Into our actual personal walk with your brother and sister. Intimately. Christ in us. Where's Jesus? But in my brother. Where's Christ? But in my brother and my sister. Well, if I'm going to come to know Jesus and, and walk in Christ in the light... Where am I going to do that but in my relationship with my brother and my sister? And it sure better be more than what the uh, Pharisees are pra practicing out here. It better be an honest-to-goodness walk, knowing one another's personal needs and being in prayer with each other in a genuineness, because all that phony, fake stuff is not getting in. So, <laughs> might be hearing a little echo I wanna, when I... Uh, I set the uh, I set it up on a, uh, a barbecue. And at least for me, i uh, the barbecue cover. <laughs> it's got a getting an echo back from it. Okay, amen. So I uh, this is the evangelic ministry of the uh, Melchizedek priesthood, the holy. Spirit priesthood of the anointing speaking the truth and love that I believe is getting ready to come forth laying it down the way it is amen and this is what has not been it's the love of the brethren the word even said that in the end many would have the love would have turned cold and that the vast majority would be lukewarm. Well, what was that in relationship? It said to return to our first love. Now everybody, oh, my first love is Jesus. My first love is Jesus. Well, then you're a liar. You're not standing in the truth. If your first love is Jesus, you got a problem. What's the word say? It says, if you don't love your brother and a sister, you can't love Jesus. You can't love God. Are you getting this? Yeah. Love God with all your heart, mind, and soul. First absolute commandment. But right after that is to love your brother as you do yourself. And the word tells us that if I don't love my brother... 
then I can't love God. So I'm disobeying the first commandment by not genuinely loving my brother and my sister. Did you get that? <laughs> it's an love you. I gotta love you. I love you. Because some of you are just so obedient and willing to pick up on this and, and being led in the Spirit of God that you, you just make me cry with tears of joy. And others of you are so block-headed and thick-headed and hard-hearted and stiff-necked that you want to argue about all of the scriptures in the Word of God, but none of you want to live, actually live the love of God through you towards another. It's time to shut up and put up. Be the Word. Do the Word. Live the Word. I love you guys. God knows I love you guys. So, we need to start to open up to one another. And I haven't heard other people say, well, this isn't the format for doing it. Well, then what format would you think would be the right one? If you can't do it on this one, which is nothing more than a video call, then what one do you suggest we do it on? If we can't practice that righteousness in every aspect, in every avenue of our life, right here, right now, on the comment sections, in these videos to one another, then where do you suspect that we should do it at? And when do you suspect we should do it? You know, everybody was just too busy to come to that wedding feast. They had all this other stuff to do. They didn't believe uh, it was time to come. And rather than to listen to what the Spirit of God was saying, they chose not to, and as a result of it, they got left behind. I love you guys. I pray that this video will be a blessing to you and to all that listen to it. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. Let me try to turn her off here. <laughs> amen. I love you guys. Amen. Father bless you.